Shoulder impingement syndrome is a common source of pain in the shoulder, and you'll find it in about 50% of the patients that's coming to the doctor with a complaint of a shoulder problem. Sometimes we call it cuff tendinitis or shoulder bursitis. The patients are more familiar with shoulder bursitis, so we use that term. It's really an irritation of the rotator cuff, and it can lead to breakdown and tear of the tendon. It could be considered an overuse syndrome. So let's look at the anatomy of the shoulder. You got the scapula, the glenoid, and the head of the humerus. On top of it, you got the rotator cuff inserted into the greater tuberosity. Above it is the bursa. And then above that is the acromion. You can see the shoulder joint different than the area where the bursa is. And in this dynamic view, as you lift the arm up, the tendons can be easily irritated because there are bone above these tendons and bone below these tendons. And as the tendon gets squeezed and irritated, that causes pain. How do you diagnose it? You start with the history. Pain in the shoulder that increased by overhead activity. If the patient has night pain, probably non-operative treatment would not work. It's probably a cuff tear. Now we go ahead and examine the patient and we're gonna move the arm so you need to warn the patient because the patient may get pain and get upset. These are called the impingement tests. And the whole idea with this test that the head of the humerus will rise up and squeeze the tendons and the patient will have pain and will stop lifting the arm up. And keep in mind, these tendons can progress to a full thickness cuff tear with the continuation of the irritation. The first test is the near impingement test. In that test, you pinch the cuff by the under surface of the acromion. So you're gonna stabilize the patient's scapula and you're gonna take the arm straight in a forward flexion all the way up and see if you can pinch the tendons against the acromion. When there is pain, that is a positive sign. And this diagnosis is confirmed when the pain is relieved by the injection of some numbing medicine, like 10 ml of 1% xylocaine in the subacromial space. You may add 2 cc of corticosteroid to the numbing medicine, and that's called near impingement test. So the near impingement sign, when you get the impingement, the near impingement test when you inject the numbing medicine and the patient feels better. And the other test called the Hawken sign. So you're gonna flex the shoulder to 90 degree, you're gonna flex the elbow to 90 degree, and the internal rotate the shoulder. That will bring the greater tuberosity underneath the acromion and lead to impingement and pain. That becomes a positive Hawken sign. Imaging. The x-rays can show the bone is spur of the acromion, which is prominence on the undersurface of the acromion. This spur digs into the cuff. So what x-rays do we get? We get the true anteroposterior view, which will show the acromiohumeral interval, which is about 7 to 14 millimeter normally. You can also get the scapular Y view lateral, 
It can show you the spares. It also can show you the type of acromion you have. And the other one is the Sobraspinatus outlet view, which will show you the acromion morphology. Is it flat type 1, or is it curved type 2, or is it hooked type 3? And you can see here the incidence of each type and the percentage of the associated cuff pathology. And it seems like the hugged acromion is associated with most of the impingement and the rotator cuff pathology. Another helpful study is the MRI, and the MRI will show the associated cuff pathology. Now we will go for treatment. And the treatment will start by non-operative treatment. We start with Motrin or non steroidal anti-inflammatory. Always ask the doctor about the side effect of any medication you're taking. All medication have side effects. Physiotherapy. So you're going to do physiotherapy for the front and the back muscles of the shoulder. It will give more room for the shoulder to move. Physiotherapy will be an aggressive cuff strengthening and periscabular muscle stabilization exercises. And the aim is to coordinate the muscles and to regain the full range of motion of the shoulder. Then we will give the patient an injection, subacromial injection, usually injection of numbing medicine and cortisone. Hopefully, the cortisone will decrease the inflammation. And the numbing medicine, if it works and the patient gets better, then we have the correct diagnosis. Some people use blind injection, which I use in the first time. But after that, I use ultrasound-guided injection. And I go into the bursa and I inject the bursa. Then I ask the patient to come back in six weeks. And I repeat the injection. And if the patient is not doing well, at that point, we dig deeper. We get an MRI. The MRI will give us an idea about other pathology that exists. And when I roll out a cuff tear. If it turns out it's just an impingement of the shoulder, and the patient is not getting better, and they have significant pain despite the conservative treatment, then we need to do surgery. When do you do the surgery? You do the surgery when you failed conservative treatment for about four to six months. The surgery outcome is usually not as good in patients with workman's compensation claims. So we'll shave the undersurface of the acromion to make more room, and we call that subacromial decompression. If there is pain from the AC joint, associated with the impingement, then you probably need to excise the outer part of the clavicle. And you got the biceps next to the impingement is connected to the rotator cuff associated tendinitis. Then you may want to work on the biceps like bicep tenotomy or biceps tenodesis. The result of surgery is usually very good. If you have the proper patient, the proper clinical situation, the proper diagnosis, and positive injection test. So after surgery, you're gonna give the patient a sling for a few days. You're gonna return to normal daily activity in a week or two. At two weeks, the patient will be able to lift the arm up in the air. And at two months, the patient will be near normal.